Hello everyone, if you follow my channel, you know that I'm working on the feature of floating panels in KD Plasma. And I've worked on this for like months at this point. It took me way more than I expected. I remember asking for donations about this very thing months and months ago. But now finally it's almost done and with a bit of luck it will be in the next release of Plasma 5, as I said. However, it was hard. It was super hard and I want to explain why doing that feature was that hard. So let's get into it. So how would you think of approaching this is, okay, you have like the monitor, this is the border of the monitor, and usually you have the panel, but we want to make this floating. Okay, so we could just put a margin to the left and to the bottom of the panel, and it would become like this, and here you get the icons. And uh, that's actually not enough at all. It would be super simple to do this, but it's not that, like that. First of all, if you look closely to the panel, you can see that the borders are not rounded, which makes sense. If you like shorten the panel, they become rounded, but not on the bottom. If a panel is floating, it should be rounded. So what you have to say is, okay, if it's attached to the border, then it shouldn't be rounded. If it's floating, it should be rounded. And of course, I do animate between the two. If you click on the please float button, or if you maximize a window, the panel stops floating and there's an animation between not floating and floating. So you do actually have to animate between the two like this. What's the issue? If you animate between these two, you also have to animate the corners. Otherwise it would look weird that it goes from being uh, not rounded to immediately rounded. How can you animate between rounded corners and not rounded corners? You can't, you just can't. I've looked everywhere and it's not possible to animate within the two, which is an issue. There's also another issue. Now, what you see as the panel looks like just a panel and you think, okay, that's the panel, that's easy. However, it's actually made from two different components, a panel and the effects applied behind the panel. As an example, example blur. So how this works is that you have the panel and then underneath the panel, in the same exact position, you have a mask for the blur and so that behind the panel you actually blur, blur all the stuff. And you don't just have that, you also have the contrast effect, which I've talked about in the past, which is uh, changing the colors of the background to make sure that it's prettier. So if I just move the panel and that's it, what's going to happen is that the mask for the blur is going to remain in the same place. So the panel moves, but the blur doesn't, and that could look horribly wrong. And that means that when the panel is floating, I just have to move the mask accordingly. Issue, the position of the mask and the position of the panel are actually managed by two different files, and so I have to communicate between those files. But okay, I can do that. That's not hard. However, however, I also have to animate both at the same time. I cannot like animate the panel that moves and then moving the mask at the same time. That's just, that would look weird. Like the panel moves and then the blur does, weird. I have to animate them at the same time. And that's already slightly more difficult, but it's not just that. So when the panel is rounded, the blur effect also needs to be rounded. Otherwise we have the corners back. So what we need to do is when the panel is attached to the border, we have a blur effect that's like no square corners. When it's floating, it has to have rounded corners. And you have to animate the mask between rounded corners and square corners when you switch between the two. And as I said, that's actually impossible. That you can't do that. And that means that it's a mess. So how did I actually approach this seemingly unfixable issue? So what I did is I actually go to Plasma and say, you know what, can you actually draw two panels for me? So we've got the floating panel and you also have the normal panel. Okay, so you've got both of them. At this point, when you switch between the two, you don't actually move the panel in one and the other position because that's impossible. You have to animate a lot of things that you cannot animate, but you just change the opacity of the two. And then you also animate the position of the floating one to make it appear as if you're actually morphing the panel when you're not. You're just switching between two panels that are already there. 
still, uh, still you do have to sync the position of the mask underneath the floating panel and the mask of the panel that's stuck to the border. And also you need to change the masks of the two panels because you have two panels, you're going to have two masks. One that's not rounded and one that is rounded. So you also need to switch between the masks. However, whereas with panels, I can actually do like opacity changes of the uh, two panels to make it seems like you're switching from one to another. Uh, the mask is just that one. It, you cannot give opacity to the mask. A blur is going to be blur regardless of where it is. So you just need to switch from one to another without any animation. And that would sound easy if it was, however it isn't. And to be completely honest with you, I still haven't understood why when you change the mask, it doesn't actually change. So what's happening right now is that you switch to a floating panel and you still preserve the same mask of the panel that's not floating. And that means that you get a corner spark. So currently I'm trying to implement floating panels. I am almost there, but I still get corners back, which is annoying. Now, before I wrap up and explain how I actually, the last issues that I'm trying to solve, let me just say that if I'm able to do this because it's my free time, it's only thanks to the people who actually donate to my Patreon and PayPal and everything. So I really, really have to say thank you for all of them because otherwise without them, I wouldn't be able to have this much time to dedicate to KD. So if you have some mind to spare even a couple of bucks every month, that would help. But anyway, let me get back to my sweet panels and let me actually get in slightly more detail. So let's open up the panels that, sorry, the files that I'm working on. So I was almost done, almost done until I sent the merge request and I was please asked to add an option to switch between a panel that's floating and a panel that's not floating. And I thought, okay, that's not too hard. I just have to add an option to actually check if a panel is floating or not. So what I do is I've got panel code and this is like the panel view code. And in here, I just check if the panel configuration file has it's floating or it's not floating in it. And if it's floating, it sets a variable that can then be read by here, which is just the appearance of the panel. And the appearance of the panel actually changes the margin only if it's floating. And by changing the margin, it has an animation on a variable that is then read by the panel code, which then takes that uh, variable and updates it during the update mask um, the update mask function. What is the update mask function? It's the function that actually draws the mask and then does the blur and the contrast effect. And you do have it here. What it does, it treats the property panel mask from the root object of this file. And then it just draws it for the blur and the background contrast effect. What I added here is also reading the properties of the margin and moving this mask depending on the margin. And as the variable changes in the file with appearance, it also changes here to actually move the mask that's underneath the panel. That kind of works, kind of. The issue is of course this panel mask variable because the panel mask should be the rounded mask when it's uh, floating and the non-rounded mask when it's not floating, which means that in here, the panel mask should switch between non-floating and floating masks, depending on whether we are floating. However, it is already switching between something and that something is the opaque or the translucent items because we also have adaptive transparency. And what that means is that I have to switch between a translucent floating mask if it's translucent and floating, a opaque floating mask if it's opaque and floating, a opaque non-floating mask and a translucent non-floating depending on the floating, floatiness uh, value and the adaptive transparency value. It's a mess, it's a mess, right? So what I did is say, okay, if your panel is floating, it has to be transparent. Like, I'm sorry, that's how it is. So if you do that, it's slightly easier because now we've just got three, opaque non-floating, transparent non-floating and transparent floating. And the floating one is the messy one. So we just have that one of that 
So what we would do here is add a new check and say that if it's floating, then always return a translucent, translucent floating mask. Does this work? Kind of, kind of. So to summarize, I'm almost done. This is the issues that I've had. This is why it's been so hard to make this. And if you're wondering why do we even have that complexity under the hood? Uh, well, complex things are complex and Plasma is a desktop and a desktop is not easy. As an example, blur and contrast effect underneath the panel being managed by a different file, that's because of a variety of reasons. First of all, blur and contrast effect are actually completely independent on uh, when they're used. You can use blur and the contrast effect, the very same ones, pretty much everywhere, and third party might want to use it too. Some uh, plasma themes don't use it, some plasma themes do, so you have to be super customizable in that regard. And also at the very bening, beginning of KD Plasma, everything was in the C++ file, then QML came and it was later, so everything had to be ported to QML. And it's not so easy to make sure that over time all of the code base uh, still makes sense, complete sense. So you do have to deal with a bit of weirdness in the code sometimes. And for the floating panels, that's what killing me right, me, right now, sorry.